Now listen, if you think about a, a cat, okay? So you come home to a cat and it's sitting there and you feed a cat and you put water in front of a cat and you brush a cat and you get little balls for the cat and they swoop them around, they do all those things. A cat will see you giving them things, serving them, and they will deduce that they are God. Okay? But a dog, you do the same things. You feed it, you give it water, you, you brush its hair, you play with it, and the dog will conclude that you are God. And it will serve you. That's why when you come home, your dog is waiting at the front door, right? <laughs> right? And your cat is sitting perched up in the windowsill, waiting for you to feed it. And then it's just gonna saunter down and eat its stuff. Because one of them believes that you serving them means that you're God, and one of them means that you serving them means that they're God. Most people live their lives as a cat theology. You think because God blessed you, made you alive today, gave you some health, gave you some wealth, gave you, that you must be God. You must be really something. And the whole gospel comes along and goes, no, 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 you don't get it. You gotta be a dog. He blesses you and you're at the front door wagging your tongue saying, what's next, Lord? You are God, I'm not God. And so the reality is, this is constantly the life and the tension we live in. Romans chapter 11, all things are from him and through him and to him, to him be glory forever. Hebrews chapter two, all things exist for him and by him. This is the reality. Now, some of you are like, well, this feels very narcissistic. I can't believe that God is like this. Paul's saying you gotta live to the glory of God. Why would he do this? Here's the reality. This is the best news in the world. Because some of you might deduce it and go, well, if God's all about himself, if he's his highest priority, that's gonna be bad for me. But that's because you're a modern thinker. What the Apostle Paul understands is because God is about himself and his glory being felt in the world, which is why you should live for his glory, it's the best news in the world, not just for him, but for us. Oh, because this is how you were designed. Come back to the original question. How are you not gonna feel isolated and depressed and all of the different things that, you're, that secular, the atheistic worldview goes after, that the progressive secular worldview goes after, and everyone's feeling lost and isolated and alone and not really sure what, how to answer these big massive questions. The reality is, God says, the way I designed you was to give me glory. And when you're not giving me glory, you're outside of creation. You have a particular way you were designed. And it's like a puzzle piece. And when you're connected to the God revealed in the person and work of Jesus, the reality is when you're living your life to the glory of God, you are most satisfied. You are most happy in the long run. I'm not talking short term. I'm not saying you, you, you follow God and he's never, you're never gonna get cancer. That's not what I'm talking about. But some of you, you follow God under a begrudging submission, thinking if I don't follow him, then he's gonna give me cancer. If I don't do this, then something bad's gonna happen. That's karma, that's religion. Gospel comes in, says you were designed this way. So when you have God at the center of your life, then you flourish in every other aspect of your life because you're doing it the way God designed you. You're living for the glory of God, even in the midst of suffering. So John Piper says, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him, even in the midst of loss. Even when we've lost everything and we live to the glory of God, we become satisfied in a way we never would have been because that's literally how we were designed. Westminster Confession starts like this. The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's the beauty of it. Because living for the glory of God is my lot in life, not living for the glory of me.